Hi guys, welcome to 16-Bit Bench. Matt here. Uh, today we're going to be reviewing something I bought a little while ago. Uh, it's this uh, Pandora 5S 999 games in one arcade sort of stick emulation box. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to take you through some of the features of it. We're going to have a look inside and we're going to play some games. And then I'm going to tell you what I think about it. And we're going to see some of the problems that, that this machine has with compared to other emulation platforms so yeah that I think what we'll do first is we'll take a look inside so we can understand uh, what's actually going on here and uh, we'll go from there so yeah I'm gonna uh, open it up okay so it's basically just a box with some arcade buttons on it uh, it's secured by three screws one two three so if we undo those then we should be able to flip the lid and see what's going on inside There you go. Um, so as you can see, what we have inside is a load of buttons for the arcade control, and uh, there's some, there's an LED strip light to make it look fancy and flashy. Uh, two uh, standard joysticks, and uh, there's this uh, board down here. Now the board's very similar to a Raspberry Pi or an Orange Pi. It's it's Linux uh, on a board, single board PC. Um, and then uh, operating system is under this QC sticker here and there's a there's a, a flash card that contains the OS and and the ROMs uh, and then over here on the side there's a speak there's a speaker no there is a fan and the fan uh, is to uh, not really do anything because it doesn't get that hot it's made out of metal so this whole metal thing acts as a massive heatsink on the other side here you can see a speaker and uh, so it has it has internal sound and I can turn it up if I go to the back and I start a game you'll hear the music that it does when it boots up there we go so yeah it's pretty simple inside um, so what this is really what this machine really is is it is a uh, oh, there we go. Let's go to that. It's the combination of a Pandora card, and Pandora cards are arcade emulation boards that you can get that um, allow you to play hundreds of games on one arcade cabinet. And then a super gun, and a super gun I made a video about, and I'm going to link the video here. Um, that's super. That's a super gun, and a super gun is basically taking all the controls out of a, a video, an arcade cabinet and uh, putting it into a sort of portable or desktop format. So what this does is combines those two things, the Pandora multi-game emulation card and the uh, super gun concept into one box. Yeah, so this is, this is like a Pandora card but with the jammer connections removed and they're replaced by, uh, by this header here and you can see all the button controls are, are on two cable looms for player one and player two. And they're going down into um, into this header. It, annoyingly, it, it combines the functions of the, the coin, uh, the sort of coin mech, you know, detecting a credit with the player one start button and player two start button. So when you hit these buttons, you get both functions at the same time. And I actually prefer not to do that. I'd like to put my coins in separately. Um, in what you can do with the Pandora cards is you can actually use them as uh, revenue generating arcade machines which you know is a bit of a legal gray area because you're not paying for for the games you're you know getting them from uh, as ROMs and then you're charging customers to play those ROMs so it's a bit of a gray area um, well not really it is illegal uh, yeah, that's what the Pandora cards allow you to do. A lot, most people don't do that, but yeah, you might may, may find, you know, if you're on holiday somewhere, you know, Thailand or India or whatever, and they've got an arcade machine, it might be that the arcade machine is actually a Pandora card that's uh, got uh, got ROMs on it instead of an actual an actual board. Um, yeah, so I think what we'll do next is we'll um, have a look at what comes in the box, and then after that we'll uh, play some games. So we'll see what the quality of this thing is like. 
Okay, so here we have the, the shipping box that it comes in. Um, it is really nicely packaged. Uh, I have no complaints about the packaging or the build quality whatsoever. So yeah, it comes in this, you know, relatively legit looking box. Tells you what, what's, what it does. Super high resolution video, that's bullshit. Um, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, low power design, not so sure about that. Um, but yeah, it's a top brand component and chipset again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, ignore that stuff. Yeah, so let's open the box and see what we get inside. Um, so there's this top layer of foam that contains most of the ancillary things. Uh, you get a VGA cable, uh, you get a USB um, A to A cable, which is pretty strange. Uh, and I believe that is so you can use the uh, the controls of the joystick on a separate device. So uh, you can use it as a, uh, you can use the joystick on something else that accepts a USB uh, device. Um, I haven't tried that myself. I'm not sure if that's 100% works. And you get two uh, replacement buttons, little micro switches in there. Um, but yeah, you really have to cane this thing to uh, to go through a button. Oh, and you get you get a power supply, depending on your uh, yeah. Well, it's an IEC power supply, and you get a you get a cable as well, depending on your region. So yeah, uh, what's that? Um, Twelve volt, three amp power supply. Uh, feels really light, really cheap, really plasticky. I haven't opened it. Um, my advice would be if you were to buy one of these. Uh, do not leave it plugged in all the time. I do not trust uh, trust these generic Chinese built light and cheap power supplies. There's no there's no branding on this. I don't know who made it. I do not trust it. You know, if you want to see why you're not supposed to trust these things, check out uh, Big Clive. Uh, his channel's linked in the description below. He tears down these kind of things. Yeah, they're they're to just. Always keep, always be dubious, always be aware. If you've got anything like this, do not leave it plugged in 24 seven, you know? And that goes the same for, for retro consoles as well. If you've got like an old Sega, my, you know, Master System, Mega Drive, whatever, don't leave that power supply plugged in all the time. It gets really hot and it's sucking power and the thing is 30 years old. So yeah, that goes for that stuff as well. But this stuff, you know, be warned. Uh, yeah, then you get a kind of brief user manual. It tells you all the stuff you kind of already know. Power cable, how to plug in an HDMI, how to plug in a VGA. Uh, there's a configuration menu and we'll go through that. Uh, yeah, the coin dual funk. It, if, you, if you see here, can we see that? Yeah, it's a bit washed out, but uh, here is, I'll tell you what, I'll take a photo of this and I'll overlay it. So on, on here, this is incorrect. You've got coin and start. That's not how it works. You, on the actual console, you've got a play button and then you've got player one and player two start, which also puts the coin in. Uh, so yeah, uh, just describing some of the menus there and a, a picture. Yeah, so this, this manual doesn't 100% apply to, to the version that I have. Uh, so yeah, below here is just uh, is the empty space where, where the get thing goes. Um, don't need to show you it in the box. Yeah, so I bought this, uh, would have been around the end of November, arrived uh, sort of right up to Christmas, probably around the 20, 22nd, 23rd of December. Um, yeah, so, and that was direct from Japan, oh, it's Japan, China. And it was about 150 pounds, I'm going to say, shipped. Uh, so there are others out there. They all vary in price. Um, you, I've seen adverts for these as well come up on Facebook feeds and stuff like that. So yeah, they, they are pushing these. Uh, I'm not 100% sure of the legality of one of these things. I, I'd, you know, it's full of ROMs. They're selling it for a profit. Um, it, they're shipping it into the UK. It doesn't have any kind of safety standards. It hasn't been... Uh, tested by the by the UK like safety people it doesn't have any kite marks or 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 safe testing or anything any age rating doesn't have any of that so for the most part yeah this is this is a dubious product a dubious product the legal the legal status of this product 
is questionable. So yeah, that's the box. Let's uh, let's plug it back in um, and let's uh, let's have a look at the quality of the the video and the games. I've just booted it up. Um, what I'm going to be doing is also running a live capture. Uh, sound doesn't seem to work on my capture card for this device. So for any sort of capture off off the pan off the Pandora, um, I'm not going to have any sound. Okay, so what I did when I when I bought this thing was I I went online and I printed out the whole list of games. So I had a decent idea of what I was going to get. Um, on there and yeah there are a lot of good games on here uh, but it does suffer from some 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 significant problems um, so if we find I tell you what let's find some standards so we, we know we know what we're dealing with so let's find double dragon uh, I think it has like all double dragon and the variants there we are double dragon um, so the output of this of the Pandora is uh, is not HD. It's uh, 800 by 600 at 60 hertz. If you can see that on the screen there. Um, so what it's doing is it's up converting anything that's not 800 by 600 to 800 by 600. And what we can see here on the Double Dragon title screen is that it looks super soft and blurry. The pix is not one to one pixel mapping. Um, it's not very sharp at all, and what I think we'll do is take a look at a comparable retro sort of system like the uh, like the SNES Mini, uh, and we'll see what it what you can actually achieve on an HDMI out done done properly. Hey, so this is this is my uh, my uh, SNES Mini, which I've actually hacked and put loads of extra ROMs on it. So if we look at the resolution coming out of that 720p, it's proper, you know. You know, HD by most people's definition of HD. Um, if I fire up Super Mario World, and we can see from the game capture one, I've got sound on the game capture, which I didn't have on the Pandora, but you know that's besides the point. Um, there is, you know, one-to-one -one pixel mapping. You can see each individual pixel on the screen. You know, there's a slight, there's a slight sort of artifact around them. Um, you know, if you, I don't know if YouTube is going to pick that up on the encoding. But you know, if you've got one of these, you and you take a look, you see what I'm talking about. Especially here uh, on the map screen, if you look at the lake just above where where you know the ghost house is, and you look at the black outline of the lake, what you can see uh, is uh, a white kind of artifacting on on the pixels. So that's just some kind of upscaling artifact. But compared with the um, the output of the Pandora. You know, this is a million times better. This is this is fantastic. You know, it looks really good, and I'd really have liked to see some uh, way on the Pandora to have that that functionality. So yeah, if we look, what I'm going to do now is go back to the Pandora and have a look in the menus, and you'll see that the menus are kind of limited in what we can do and uh, what we can what we can select. Um, yeah, so let's do that now. Let's go have a look at the menu and I'll show you some of the options that you get, uh, configuration options in the Pandora. Let's take a look at the configuration menu. When I find the button, it is there. Yes, yeah, so on the black is a little is a little micro switch button that, uh, that activates this menu. So in here, you've got stuff like testing the controls, UDEF, yeah, uh, pause is a shared button between the two, and it says coin again. Pause, pause doesn't do doesn't do what it says it does. And up, down, left, right on player two. Uh, you can start. Uh, yeah, so you can test the functionality there. Um, in theory, you could rewire it, I guess, to um, to make it revenue generating. Uh, as I said, legal grey area about that. Don't really think that is something that you can get away with. Um, I don't know what auto exit does. Okay, yeah. So if the game's not played after three minutes, I guess it kicks you back out. Uh, 
select game mode. How do I get that highlighted? Yeah, there you go. Coin and you with coin. Okay, so yeah, based on the free play setting. Uh, quality optimization. So I'm leaving this off. Um, what you would one would hope is if you left it off, you would get uh, you would get pixels or or scan lines. What I find you actually happens is turning it on makes it even softer. So it adds a kind of uh, sort of softening to the edge of the pixels. I'll tell you what, we'll turn that on and I'll show you some games and we'll have a look at that in a sec. Uh, game settings let you go through all of the ROMs one by one and edit the um, dip switches that are on that. So, you know, I can change the number of lives, uh, uh, the difficulty. Uh, you can add games to a favorites list, but uh, I've read that creating a favorites list on some versions of the software uh, bricks it. So I have not created a fav favorites list on this machine. I just don't think that's something you is worth risking. Um, so if you brick it, the only way to unbrick it is to is to get a um, image of and re-image the SD card. Um, last time I saw someone was selling them on eBay, so you'd have to pay about thirty pounds to get get a re-image. Like no thanks. Um, so. Yeah, maybe top tip, if you're gonna play with these settings, I would suggest you go and take the card out and you make an image of it and then upload that image to, say, Dropbox or Google Docs so you know you've got a safe a safe backup for the system and you can re-image the card whenever you want. Uh, bookkeeping. Doesn't even let me in. But I guess that's a holdback from, from the Pandora cards where you can see how many, how many coins have been put in. As you see there on the screen, I've, I've pressed, I've put 192 coins in. I, I swear it's way more than that. Like, you know, every time I start a game, I hammer the, I hammer the credit button loads. Okay, and then you save your settings and you reboot and it will go back through. So why don't we speed up time? Okay, so that's, uh, that's time sped up. Uh, let's pick a game where it would show Oh yeah, let's just talk about Afterburner real quick. So Afterburner doesn't play at all. I mean, it does play. We can load it. It's terrible though. Uh, really slow. The the emulation, the power of the card in 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 here is just not powerful enough to do a game like this. And I suspect that's why you don't see uh, Chase HQ either, which is another game that requires quite a lot of. I don't know if it's a lot of power, but a very specific sort of um, scaling ability that just isn't isn't available in software emulation very well. Yeah, is it? Yeah. So, you, what we can see here is the effects of the image improvement. So, if you look here, you can see uh, around missile. See how it's in, even more soft than it was. If you look at the letters that you know around the edge of the A and the B, you can see where it's softened up quite a lot. Um, yeah. Oh, and look at the screen tearing on this. Is it's ridiculous. So, if you could hear the music, if we could actually capture that, um, then what you'd be what you'd be seeing is also what you'd be hearing is a really slow, slowed down version of the afterburner music. Double dragon here. Uh, put some coins in. Like I said. The credit and player start buttons are combined, which I, I don't like, but um, can't do anything about that. And when you see here, if there's any scrolling of the screen, uh, even the even on the sprites, if the sprites move quickly, there is significant screen tearing. And I'm not usually one of those ones who like complains too much about that sort of stuff. Uh, but yeah, it bugs the hell out of me on this. So, you know, you've paid what is, you know, in, compar in comparison to say uh, a NES Mini, which you can, you know, you can hack and put all the games on you want. You could, you could actually put other emulators and play other ROMs on it as well. Or, you know, the standard, the gold standard is the Raspberry Pi. You know, if you've got a Raspberry Pi 3, um, the, the picture out and the screen tearing is much less of a consideration than I'm seeing on um, 
on this. So yeah, bugs the hell out of me, that does. Um, so fighters are Fighters aren't the worst of it. The worst are going. The worst is shooters. So if I go back to uh, to the menu here and we find a shooter, anything side scrolling is is a pain. No dragon breed. Let's try that. Uh, having said that, the loading is really quick. You know, you're not waiting around very long. Um, the uh, the build quality and you know we've had a look inside. I'm really happy with the build quality of it. Like if I was to rip the guts out of it and put a Raspberry Pi in it, I think that would it would be a fantastic piece of kit. And you see you can see the screen tearing there on the um, and the flashing here. You can see the flashing and the tearing on the flashing uh, as it strobes. Uh, yeah, it's just not very good and like the even up and down I can see that it's It's uh, sort of jumping and jagged and dropping frames and oh, it's just it's just depressing really, you know I've tested it on the VJ out as well, and it's 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 the same. It's the same um it tears. It's 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 annoying. Yeah, what what is? It's just makes me sad, man. It's such a. It could be such a cool thing. It could be such a cool thing, but the quality of it is just a pain. The the pitch quality is just a pain. And it, it, I've read forums. I've looked into it. Um, the people that have built this have written the software. They've encrypted it in some way, so it's not possible to add uh, add extra ROMs to your to your Pandora, you can't do it on this version. Um, or yeah, as far as far as I'm aware, you can't do it yet. Maybe someone is is on in the process of cracking it. Uh, game selection, uh, you know, is really good. I, I'm only I'm only upset because there's no Chase HQ, and Chase HQ is my favourite game. Um, but yeah, things things I really wanted on here are on here. So, uh, Ghouls and Ghosts is on here. Golden Axe is on here. Uh, something I, you know, I really, really have fond memories of uh, is the first arcade game I ever, uh, ever completed in the arcade, and that is the Punisher, which is on here when we get to P's. S I think it's actually hidden under the Punisher. Uh, Rambo 3, you know, that's a fun game. I really enjoy playing that. Uh, Robocop is on here. And Robocop 2, which is more, which is actually much more fun than Robocop. Robocop, you know, is cool for, like, the music and, and the stuff. But, you you know, it's, as soon as you die, it freezes and you have to put in another coin and all that stuff. So, yeah. Um, find the Punisher and we'll play that for a little bit yeah if you want to know a full games list of that I've linked that in description as well so it's full game list for the Pandora's key 5s um, uh, yeah <laughs> that's the thing like it's got a great selection of games the, the actual build quality of the thing is great it's fantastic um, it's just technically Technically, it lets you down. It lets you down, and that's sad. Oh yeah, Simpsons four players on here. Of course, you can only play two player, as far as I'm aware. There's no way to add add sticks. Uh, that USB port doesn't let you do that, I think. But again, I've not I've not tested it. Um, yeah, Punisher possibly my favourite arcade game. So I tell you what, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and play this. Uh, you don't have to watch because I'm going to end the video. So if you found this video useful, please please subscribe to me, like it, and leave a comment. That would be great. Um, we're on Twitter and Facebook is 16 Bit Bench. We do all this kind of stuff, and mostly it's repairs and modding of of retro consoles. So um, if you're interested in that sort of thing, we've got loads of interesting stuff coming up. I'm doing a uh, 
PC Engine, you know, Turbo Graphics 16 region mod. Um, there's loads of uh, tips about how to uh, how to keep your, your systems running. Um, in the future, we're going to be putting Raspberry Pis in more things. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for that. And a never-ending selection of Game Gears. Sega Game Gears coming out of our ears. A um, lot of that. So yeah, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you found this useful. Uh, to sum up, don't buy this unless you really, really, really want it. Uh, get a Raspberry Pi instead. Uh, get, a, get a Super Nintendo Mini instead. Okay, so yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Yeah.